of deterrence is really interesting, especially how um, you mentioned before, you know, potentially, you know, if Russia is willing to inflame domestic tensions in the U.S. for Russia's benefit, then the U.S. may consider taking similar action against Russia as a means of deterrence to have Russia focus on their own internal issues rather than continue to provoke the U.S. And I'm wondering, is there a potential that this sort of practice might backfire, that Russia, in order to make the U.S. stop inflaming its domestic problems, it would actually become more aggressive towards the U.S.? You mentioned that earlier that Russia is maximalist. They might take this maximalist approach. Is there a possibility that this strategy of deterrence might backfire into you know, the opposite of deterrence? Um, So the answer to the question is, uh, no, I don't think so. I think um, we tend to fall into the trap of uh, self-deterring too often because we of of the risk of, uh, you know, potential escalation. But in the the risks of escalation are equally catastrophic for the Russians. You know, the Russians don't have a death wish. They don't have uh, less to lose than we do. Um, You know, uh, and I think the fact is that the Russians... In my own experience, the Russians respond to strength. Uh, you know, without getting too much into it, uh, while I was in the Pentagon, I had the chance. I uh, had the responsibility of managing the Russian side of the um, deconfliction operation with regard to Syria. And in my experience, I could tell you that the Russians, that the the several measures that we took to deter Russian aggression uh, were highly effective in uh, pushing back and uh, establishing a deterrence that prevented the Russians from being, you know, from going further in in their kind of uh, offensive actions. I think a prominent example is, um, you know, that the fact that we, um, when attacked by Russian forces in Deir Ezzor, we we killed some 300 Russian uh, private military uh, corporate, uh, corporation um, members and uh, those that did not lead to an escalation. And I think, you know, that's anecdotal, but again, we tend to fall. And there are, there are plenty of other examples. Um, We, we self deterred with regards to um, the Russian attack on Ukrainian uh, naval vessels in the Kerch Strait. Uh, When I mean self deterred, we had kind of normal presence patrols in the black sea and the, the president overreacted due to kind of fear of how that so, somehow either you know provoking Russians or uh, upsetting uh, Vladimir Putin, uh, and uh, we, we decided not to take action, and uh, you know that that ended up getting the Russians to to be more aggressive, not less. So I think there, um, if you understand and follow the the Russians closely, I think that the again as long as the policy is declaratory, it's clear what you're doing and why it actually advances the interest of deterrence. It doesn't, it's it's not likely to get the Russians to to be more aggressive. Part of that reason is that, you know, unlike a lot of the adversaries that they face in their near abroad, where the correlation of forces, the net net kind of aggregate of power is in their favor, uh, that is not the case with the United States and certainly not the case with the United States and, and our NATO, NATO allies. And they have no interest in provoking a direct confrontation uh, or kind of making um, the relationship, you know, much more acute than it is now. Um, they're trying to figure out a way to save face and kind of, uh, you know, dispense with some of the, th- the, the difficulties that they place themselves in, if anything.